The population in Detroit in 1900 was about 300,000 people. By 1930, it had grown to 1.6 million. When you think about the 1928 era, this entire city of Detroit was at this explosion. We had this population boom. We had architectural explosions of buildings that were new design, the most modern buildings that, that were created anywhere. The Guardian Building opened in April of 1929. Uh, it was at the height of the development of the auto industry. It cost about $12 million to build in 1929 money, and that could be 12 to 15 times that today. The building was built in about 18 months, which is, uh, pretty amazing. It wasn't always 100% appreciated. People, you know, covered it up for, some said, you know, energy savings, but they covered it up for whatever reason. So it was really back um, in the early 80s when Mishkan started their restoration. They took down those drop ceilings. They had um, tiles that were missing restored. So it's we've had these, you know, decades now of people restoring this building and, and taking care of it. Mishkan purchased the building um, in the 80s. We got into a building that was basically modernized in the 50s and 60s. It was made to look like everything else with the uh, aluminum types of uh, ceiling uh, effects and false ceilings and a lot of what was originally the part of the Guardian building, the attractiveness of it, um, was covered up. Once the, the team began to uncover all this and discover the beautiful ceilings of Puabic pottery and tile and, and the beautiful windows and, and the lights were still intact under the, you know, the ceilings, it, we realized we really had a historic gem. The building speaks for itself. That's one of the incredible things about it. That there's a lot of backstory to be known, which is fascinating. There was just so much to uncover and I, I think really enjoying the fact that uh, all of this was still there. And the team actually worked to uh, obtain the historic uh, designation, so I believe it was June 29th, um, 1989, that we finally achieved that. And so it was, you know, the beginning of uncovering this beautiful building and its grandeur. This building had scaffolds around it for a number of years because the, the tiles were falling. And they've been able to fortunately take care of those tiles, work with the Smith Group, who was the original architect of the building, which I think is incredible, and they are still in this building. And they are the ones who were contracted with to take care of the tiles that were falling and all of the other architectural things that needed to be taken care of to make sure the building was safe for those walking around it as well as safe for those working inside of it. I personally was very glad when I saw the county purchase it because it, it seemed to be faltering. As I mentioned, I got an opportunity to visit some of the floors after Mishkan had left, and everything was basically intact, you know, eight, ten years later, and it was a shame to see the building deteriorating again. And so to, to know it was going to have new life was, was tremendous. Um, I know there was a lot of criticism in the news at that time, which, you know, was, was, didn't make me feel good about it. but. Uh, but no, once, once that subsided, uh, the fact that we were able to take this building and, and it's an, you know, a wonderful blend of historic and, and technology. Taking care of the building and also appreciating the architecture and there's not very few days go by when I don't see a tour or some other group here uh, that's taking a look at the building as a part of an art history class, as a part of a high school class and it makes you feel good that there's that significant part of Detroit and Wayne County that's uh, here and is a government operated building. It's almost uh, awe inspiring when you walk in. It's almost like you're walking into a cathedral sometimes. Well, it's an icon, right? I mean, you sit in Comerica Park, you can see the building. You, you walk up and down uh, Woodward, you see the building. Anybody that's been here always knows, if they don't know the name of the Guardian Building, they know the orange brick building that is truly spectacular architecture. And you, you walk around and you see people out on the street, they're always looking up and I'm like, wow, look at that, look at that detail or look at this, they're taking pictures. You can spend really an unlimited amount of time here and continue to notice things and find things that maybe you didn't notice or see the first time you came. The artists made art that was for the population. They were making art that the average person could appreciate. You know, it's, it's inexorably linked to the history of city, of the state, 
of the country and even of the world. In the early 20th century, as companies were becoming corporations, as they were getting bigger, they'd be building big headquarters buildings in New York and Chicago and Detroit. And they often like to nickname them cathedrals of one thing or another. So when this building opened, it was nicknamed the Cathedral of Finance. Well, this building represented a company that was deeply invested in Detroit because the Union Trust Bank, which was the predecessor to the Union Guardian Company, was one of the main companies that financed the mortgages for churches, for homes, for small businesses, for large businesses. Port Rowland, who was the designer for Smith Group, um, had free reign basically to design everything on the building. And so he designed everything from the exterior expression to everything down to the doorknobs. The Union Trust Company was able to acquire a, uh, the entire block, but it was a very, very shallow lot. And so the, the challenge for Roland was to design a building that was wide but very narrow, and at the same time wanting to convey the idea of permanence and strength that the bank very much wanted to convey. And that's hard to do when you have such a, a narrow lot. The, the color of the building, the orange, uh, makes it uh, appear much more solid than it, the building would have appeared if it had been a light color. The mural behind me is meant to depict Michigan and show who we are as a state and a people. And that was painted by a, an artist from the Traverse City area named Ezra Winter. He drew the uh, map of Michigan as the backdrop and then in the center of it is a, an allegorical figure of Michigan. She's holding two cornucopias of our agricultural bounty over her shoulders and then the sun rays behind her. You've got that big sort of sun ray display with symbols that represent the major industries in Michigan at the time. Manufacturing, commerce, fishing, lumber, mining, uh, which was a huge industry in Michigan in the early 20th century. Uh, and then at the top of the design is a symbol for finance. It's a combination of a couple different symbols. One is a, a bank scale and also two snakes wrapped around the post of the, of the scale, the central shaft of it. Uh, those two snakes, that is a version of what's called a caduceus that represents commerce traditionally. Because bank architecture had always been very conservative and the Union Trust didn't want a traditional bank building, they didn't want you to forget that you were in a bank when you, when you walked in. So they sort of scattered bank design language throughout the space. So one of the major ways of doing that was when you come in the Griswold entrance, the first thing you see on the wall right in front of you is a glass mosaic tile design. It includes the credo of the company, their, their you know, philosophy as an institution, and above that, a very stylized white pine tree. White pine is a state tree of Michigan. Beehives that were located on the Congress side by the doors, right above the doors. And you never notice them if you don't, no one tells you about it. <laughs> but the beehives uh, indicated how busy the people were inside, taking care of your monies and doing all of the business that the bank uh, had, had in, in, in store for it on the Griswold side. You see statues, one on each side of the, the door that, that I've never noticed before either. And one is, talks about security and one is safety because they wanted people to know that your money was secure and it was safe in their bank. So quite fascinating, the things that you don't look at as you pass it 50 times a day or 50 times a week. <laughs> Nobody builds building like this anymore, um, which is unfortunate. This could be quite an expensive undertaking today uh, to build a building like this. You don't find the kind of craftsmen that do the work that, that you see here, uh, at least not cheaply. So the Guardian Building is a National Historic Landmark which is the highest level of historic designation that you can get in this country that Detroiters should be very proud of. 90 years in, in a building of this nature, uh, to have been able to preserve it uh, to the level that they've been able to do, I think it's just extraordinary. And so we should celebrate those things, celebrate that we've been able to maintain it, not just maintain it, but improve it. All of the things that they've done, celebrating is the right thing to do, to be able to say, look, Detroit. The Guardian Building was here 90 years ago. It was a great building then. It's even a greater building now. Really gem of architecture in Detroit. We've got this uh, just sort of little uh, outstanding corner right here on, on Griswold with this little gem.